I just wanted to walk you through the process of picking up a microcontroller, getting its datasheet, and start developing your first embedded application. I believe that you can get started with microcontrollers programming in just one video if you stick with me to the end. We're gonna make a test board, write some code and flash it to the microcontroller and keep iterating through some cool projects that will help you get started as quick as possible. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's see how to pick a microcontroller for a specific project. Here are some aspects or features that you may need to include your, in your comparison like the price per unit, the power consumption, the available time to market if it's a product or time to for delivery if it's a project for a course or whatever and the CPU performance, how many million instructions per second do you want the CPU to uh, process, uh, do you need a floating point unit, some DSP instructions and so on. Also the peripherals, how many GPIO pins you need, how many timers you are peripherals uh, and so on. After filling up this area with the requirements that you need, then you will have to search for some potential candidates, which are basically some uh, microcontrollers. These are some family names, not a specific microcontroller parts, just for the demonstration purpose only. And you will do the comparison like this. If you value the price per unit, uh, this microcontroller be a very good fit for your application. It has a price point of 3 cents only. So it definitely will win in uh, such a comparison. And if power consumption is your main focus, then I think you should go for a PIC24 or something in that range. If you don't have enough time for delivering a project for a course or whatever, I think you should go for, for an Arduino board. Uh, especially if you don't have enough experience with, with electronics or you don't have enough time to develop your own uh, firmware drivers, then an Arduino board may be a very good fit for your application. So it's a case-by-case case, uh, kind of situation. There is no best microcontroller port for all purposes. List all the features that you need in your project and pick the microcontroller. That seems to be a very good fit for that application. It can be from any vendor like Texas Instruments, Microchip, NXP, Infineon, Rensus, ST Microelectronics, or whatever. But in some times, you may lean to uh, some specific families like from uh, ST Microelectronics. If your team is more familiar with the development uh, ecosystem from uh, STM, so uh, it may be a very good fit if you ha don't have enough time uh, for delivering the product and there is no enough time to switch to a new tool chain, maybe from NXP or whatever. I hope you can now make a guided search and decide on the best fitting microcontroller for a specific project. And let's say that we are now going to create an ABC project that requires X, Y, and Z peripherals and it happens to be uh, this PIC microcontroller which is PIC 18F45K22. Then what is the next step? We need to get started with this chosen microcontroller and let's ask the same question in a general form how to get started with any microcontroller. Number one is to get the data sheet for this part and number two is to create an LED blinking project. If you can get a microcontroller to blink an LED, you can program it to do whatever you want. The LED blinking project is a very good verification that the software tool chain is working okay, the flashing or loading process uh, is done correctly, the firmware gets loaded to all memory sections in the microcontroller just as fine, the microcontroller's power supply section is working okay on your test board, and also the CPU clock the PLL configurations and all of that is working okay and the CPU is being clocked properly and also it's doing the LED blinking in the correct timing which we can test and verify. That's why this very simple project is actually a very good test for the fluidity of the development process. Now our goal is to create a LED blinking project and our mission is to get the hardware ready and also get the software tools installed on our machine. And let's start with the prototyping or testing board. It should have the following features, 5 volts power supply, power indicator LED, oscillator circuitry if needed. Most microcontrollers nowadays come with internal oscillators so you don't need uh, to connect uh, an external crystal oscillator. It should also have a reset button to restart the microcontroller when we need and also ICSP programming port to flash the code to the microcontroller in a very simple and easy way. Let's now open the datasheet for this microcontroller in order to see uh, some of the features for this part and also the pin out for the pins that we need to connect in order to build our prototyping board. Uh, and here is the first page. All of these are the features for this part. Um, as you can see, uh, it can operate from 2.3 volts up to 5.5. And the low power devices are indicated by this L 
character and these devices are rated for 3.3 volts so our microcontroller operates at 5 volts uh, it has different options for the oscillator it has a wide variety of peripherals uh, as you can see you can check this on your own uh, let's now move to the pin out for this microcontroller here is the 40 pin DIB package that we are going to use pin number one is actually the reset pin the master clear reset pin uh, this bar uh, above the name uh, indicates that this pin operates at a negative logic which means to restart the microcontroller you have to pull down this pin to low it will do the restart when it becomes low therefore you should always pull this pin up to VDD uh, in order to, ha to have your microcontroller running if you pull it down it will be in reset state uh, this pin happens to be also the VPP pin which is the first pin of the ICSP port the programming port for big microcontrollers is called ICSP and it looks like this uh, the first pin is called uh, master clear reset or also it's the VBP pin and the second pin is VDD and ground as you can see here is the VDD and ground on the microcontroller pin number 11 and 12 and also those two pins you can connect just two of them or all of them if you want uh, then the PGD the programming data and the programming clock lines which are those pins from port B uh, those are the pins required for the ICSP now we also need to find the crystal oscillator pins which are the missing two uh, as you can see there is no labels that indicate the crystal oscillator pins so we will head over to the oscillator module and see the different uh, oscillator options uh, as you can see from this diagram there is a secondary oscillator there is a primary oscillator and there is the internal oscillator you can actually use the internal oscillator uh, without the need to connect an external uh, crystal but for this prototyping board I'm going to use an external oscillator and it go it's going to be uh, connected to the primary clock uh, module it's going to be connected to those uh, oscillator pins OSC1 and OSC2 uh, if you are going to use the secondary oscillator you can use uh, those pins now I'm searching for OSC1 and 2 and here are the pin summary table that I'm searching for um, now we are searching for the basic functionality which is the oscillator and here are OSC1 and OSC2 which happens to be uh, the two pins from port A, A6 and A7 those are the two pins that we are going to connect the external oscillator to now we don't need the data sheet anymore we know what pins we are going to connect in order to prepare our prototyping board we are going to use this pin and those two for the ICSP port and also the VDD and the ground line and also the crystal oscillator pins which are those two now we are done with the data sheet let's go to the components required to create the prototyping board first we need a breadboard the microcontroller part and a couple of uh, bypassing capacitors this bulk capacitor can be anywhere from 100 microfarads and going up and this small bypassing capacitor will be placed as near as possible to the microcontroller power bins and it's going to be anywhere from 1 nanofarad up to 100 nanofarad and here is the voltage regulator IC LM7805 which is a positive 5 volts regulator and this is the power indicator LED with a 1k ohm resistor and here is the reset push button uh, with a 10k ohm resistor and here is the 16 megahertz oscillator with two load capacitors those load capacitors can be anywhere from 10 picofarads up to maybe 15 picofarads uh, I'm going to use a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator uh, and I'm going also to activate the internal PLL in the microcontroller in order to multiply the frequency of the oscillator uh, in order to be uh, 64 megahertz which is the maximum frequency that this microcontroller can operate at I'm going to connect the external oscillator to these pins and here I'm going to select the primary oscillator not the internal and I'm also going to select this path in order to uh, use the internal PLL so the microcontroller will be operating at 64 megahertz which is also indicated in the features of this uh, microcontroller the CPU can operate up to 64 megahertz I'm going to leave a link in the description with all the parts that you are going to need in order to prepare the prototyping board here is how the board will look like after being assembled I'm going also to leave uh, some links for high resolution images I'm going to show you all the connections in a very quick way here is our prototyping board note that we have connected the upper side to the lower side of the power rails 
and also I've connected the, the right side to the left side and this one as well uh, here is the voltage regulator IC the rightmost pin uh, is the output pin which is the VDD and it's connected to the VDD line and the middle pin is the ground one it's running under the IC so that you can see it uh, in the normal view and the leftmost pin is the input pin which you will connect to the battery or any power supply you have the VDD pin is also connected to the uh, power indicator LED which is connected to the 1k ohm resistor to the ground uh, here is the ICSP port it starts with uh, this pin which is the master clear reset pin which is connected to this pin of the push button and also this pin is connected to the upper one it's internally connected in the push button this pin is connected to this one and this one is connected to this one when you press the button the diagonal pins will get connected so here is the VPP pin connected to the pull up resistor which goes to the VD and finally it's connected to the pin number one which is the master clear reset uh, next we have the VDD and the ground and the programming data and clock lines coming from those two pins from port B here is the crystal oscillator the 16 megahertz oscillator and those two load capacitors are connected in parallel with the crystal pins here is the VDD and ground pins and here is the small bypassing capacitor which is one nanofarad capacitor it's placed as close as possible to the IC here is the bulk capacitor which is used also for bypassing the power supply and that's all for the prototyping board uh, when you want to flash the microcontroller you will use this ICSP port those five pins uh, as I'm going to show you and I want also you to note that I have placed the microcontroller as close as possible to the power supply so this section is not going to be used and I wanted to make some space on the right side so you can connect external sensors uh, LCD screen or whatever you want uh, let me now show you how to connect the ICSP port usually and most of the time I'm using the picket 3 uh, and in order to flash the code to the microcontroller using this kit you will have to uh, find the marker which is this white marker and this indicates the VPP pin which is the start of the ICSP port so it's this black wire so I'm going to place the black wire on this very first pin which is this one ne right next to the push button just like this and we are now connected to the prototyping board and we can connect this picket to the VC and flash the microcontroller after flashing the microcontroller you can easily unplug the programmer uh, as you can see if you are using picket 2 uh, it's also the same uh, it has some labels on the picket uh, which also the ICSP port starting with VPP, VDD, ground, data and clock so we are now searching for the VPP and I'm also using uh, a black wire to indicate the pin number one of the ICSP so I'm searching for the black and I'm going to connect the black wire to the first pin next to the push button just like this and I can now connect the picket 2 to the PC flash the code and unplug the connector you can also use the MPLAB snap which is a very uh, easy to use and a very cheap uh, programmer and debugger and you have to note that uh, this small kit don't work with all microcontrollers it only work with uh, relatively new microcontrollers and it also has this uh, ICSP port which starts with the VPP pin indicated by this small arrow now we know how to use and connect the prototyping board and let's get back to uh, our video after completing the prototyping board, mission 1 is now accomplished. Let's move to the next mission, which is to set up all the required software tools, which is often referred to as the tool chain. Starting with the IDE, it's going to be MPLAB X from Microchip, and the compiler is going to be XC8, and the loader or the flasher tool that we are going to use for flashing the code from the PC to the microcontroller it's going to be MPLAB IPE the integrated programming environment all of these software tools are provided by microchip for free and let's see how to download and install all of these software tools we are going to start with MPLAB IDE you will search for in Google for MPLAB IDE and you will also search for XC8 compiler uh, let's go for the MPLAB IDE first I will click on this link and you will be scrolling down searching for the download link and here is the downloads section and here are the various versions for different operating systems like Windows, Linux and Mac you are going to choose the one that suits your 
operating system and you will click on the download link and you will have the MPLAB IDE downloaded. You will just start uh, installing the MPLAB IDE software and you will be prompted to uh, check for the IPE. The IPE software is included inside the MPLAB IDE installer itself. So you will also uh, check for this uh, IPE installation and after completing this installation process you will have MPLAB IDE and IPE installed on your machine. Now you will go for the XC8 compiler, click on this link and search for the download and download the XC8 compiler, then install the compiler on your machine, it's going to be a straightforward process. And now we are ready to create our first project, it's going to be the lead linking project. I will open up uh, MPLAB IDE. To create a new project in MPLAB IDE, you will go to the file menu and choose new project. Then we will choose standalone project, hit next. And here we will type in the part number of the microcontroller we are going to use. And you can also select the family for this microcontroller. If you don't know the family name, you can just leave it as it is. And here I'm going to write the PIC microcontroller's name. It's PIC 18F 45K22. This one. And I'm going to hit next. And in this window, we select the hardware tool that we are going to use for debugging. If you are not going to debug your project, you can choose any option of these. It doesn't even matter and you can also change it anytime uh, if you want. So, so I'm usually using PIC3. Uh, I will click next. Uh, here you choose the compiler that you want to use. We have installed the XC8 compiler. And this is the option that we are going to use most of the time. You can also use assembler if you want. I will click next. And here we type in the project name. Maybe PIC18F lid blinking or whatever and I'm going to save it uh, in the desktop you can save it wherever you want I will click finish to finalize creating this project we have now created our first project but it doesn't have any files yet I will start by adding a source file I will right click on, on source files and choose new and main.c I'm going to create a new main file I will call it main it's going to be main.c and I will hit finish and here we are going to write our source code uh, we will also be creating another file it's going to be a header file so i will right click on header files click new and choose a uh, xc8 header.h file uh, i will call this one config to save in the configurations that we are going to see uh, how to set up later i will click finish and we have now our configurations header file i'm going to remove all of these comments i don't need them uh, we need the header guard and this header file should be included once in your project it includes the processor files specific to the microcontroller that we have chosen uh, while creating this project i will remove this line and all of these comments as well and i'm going to leave only the uh, configurations file header guard and this preprocessor directive uh, that we usually refer to as guard is just a guarantee that this header file will not be included in multiple times in your project if you include it once it will be added to your source code and if you include it multiple times it will not generate any error and in the same time it will prevent code duplication so we are now ready to develop our lead blinking uh, project uh, i just want to remind you with the configurations for the clock that we have selected to do uh, of course you have seen me in the prototyping board i have chosen to uh, use an external oscillator uh, so let's have a look on the data sheet once more here is the option that I have used to use an external oscillator with the primary clock module and I have used the PLL. I have enabled the PLL to uh, multiply the external oscillator's frequency which is 16 megahertz uh, by 4 to become 64 megahertz and this 64 megahertz clock will be delivered to the CPU. Uh, there is also another option that I usually prefer to do in most of my projects that I'm going to show you right now. We used an external oscillator connected to these bins and we used the internal PLL in order to get 64 MHz to the CPU. However, in most of my projects, like this one, uh, I don't use external oscillator. I only place the microcontroller and use the internal oscillator. I usually use this high frequency internal oscillator and select this line and select this line internal oscillator and I don't select the internal oscillator to go to the uh, CPU directly what I do is I select the internal oscillator to uh, from these configuration bits I select the internal oscillator not the primary one and I use the internal PLL so this 16 megahertz internal oscillator will get multiplied by 4 and it becomes 64 
right here and I select the this path and I will select the primary clock now the CPU will be clocked at 64 megahertz and it's coming from the internal oscillator not the external one so we don't need to connect external components uh, on our board it's just an alternative solution and it may be a little bit complicated in the programming side and how to get this uh, oscillator to operate and tune it in order to get exact frequency of course uh, the external oscillator will be more accurate than the uh, internal trimmable uh, oscillator whatever the configurations that you want for the clock module it's your call and let's now move to the next step which is to do the configuration bits or sometimes called fuse bits or fuses as referred to in other microcontrollers and we will head over to the MPLAB IDE we will be defining the configuration bits in this header file and here are the steps you need to follow I will open the window option and I will go to target memory views and configuration bits this option click on it and it will open up a GUI tool uh, at the bottom of the screen I will move this slider just to take up uh, some space and now we can do the configurations first of all we are going to use uh, an external oscillator it's going to be a high speed oscillator it can be a high power or medium power uh, I'm going to use this option right here and you can also check the data sheet for various options of course for the PLL we are going to use the PLL we are going to enable the PLL of course primary clock is enabled and we will leave those options for the power up timer we are going to enable the power up timer I'm going to explain most of these options uh, later on in uh, future tutorials uh, but now stick with me just to get these configurations done properly uh, I'm going to disable the watchdog timer the watchdog timer is a specific timer that starts counting whenever you start your application and you have to reset this timer in a very specific time window and if your CPU fail to uh, kick the watchdog timer in the right time it will fire a hardware interrupt that will reset the whole processor so it's a very good feature to have but if you are not going to use it, use it uh, you will have to disable the watchdog timer I'm going to explain the watchdog timers in some specific tutorials in the future for the port P pins from 0 to uh, 5 these pins are by default uh, in the analog mode they are working with the ADC however I want these pins to be digital IO pins on reset so I will choose this option and here is the master clear reset pin uh, this pin is enabled so we can do uh, a hardware restart by uh, pulling down the number one pin you can actually disable the, this feature and so you don't have to pull this uh, pin up uh, all of the time if you don't want to, to have a reset switch you can disable it and use it as a general I open uh, as usual uh, I will leave it as it is and here for the single supply from the ICSP I'm going to disable this feature and all of the rest fuse bits are reserved for uh, protecting your code you can actually protect your code on the microcontroller so no one can read uh, your code from the IC you can lock the ability of uh, reading uh, your code and you can also lock the ability of writing uh, or uh, editing the code of course and also the internal EEPROM I'm not going to use memory pr protection at all so here are the configurations that we are going to use the configurations that you need to uh, do yourself are highlighted by this blue color so here are the configurations I'm going to use after finalizing uh, those configurations you will hit this button to generate the source code for these configurations I will hit generate and here is the source code that we need to copy in order to uh, achieve those specific configurations I will copy all of this code from here and I will paste it uh, inside the guard for the config.h file I will paste them here and save I will open the datasheet I highly encourage you uh, to check the configuration bits yourself uh, in the datasheet you will go to this chapter it's called um, special features of the CPU and here are the configuration bits here are the configuration bits for this uh, specific microcontroller to check each and every single bit of these registers what it does uh, if we set it to 1 if we clear it to 0 uh, you will see the different options that are provided by this microcontroller in the configuration registers and it's also uh, noteworthy uh, to know that 
these configurations are actually written to the flash memory so you can't change these configurations in the runtime by the microcontroller code uh, you will have to flash it again with the new configurations and let's now move to the main file .c I will remove this hash include I will replace it by hash include for the configurations uh, header file that we have created and of course you may have noted that uh, this file has the xc.h header file included inside so we don't have to include it uh, once again don't worry if you have included this file multiple times this header file is also guarded so you don't have to worry about multiple inclusion let's have a look on the gpio ports in this microcontroller uh, in the data sheet i will go to chapter 10 as you can see uh, this microcontroller has uh, port A, B, C, D, and E so uh, they are five ports and they are actually the same they are operating in the same uh, exact way um, there are five registers for controlling each uh, GBIO port uh, starting with the TRIS or the tri-state register this register controls the data direction you actually use this register to control uh, if this pin is going to be an input or output uh, and you have also the port register which is used for reading the digital pin state if it's in the input mode and you have the latch register or LAT which is the output latch you write to this uh, register in order to drive the output pin uh, to be high or low you write 1 for high, 0 for low and you have the analog select uh, register for selecting the pin to be in the analog mode or the digital I.O. mode and you have the slow rate control for each I.O. port uh, this controls the speed at which you can actually drive the pin high and low and this topic will be discussed in the future uh, let's now select uh, a digital I.O. pin in order to control it and do our blinking example I'm going to use uh, this pin RD0 to do the blinking so we will head over to uh, MPLAB and start developing our code but before writing the code for this project, let's see how GBIO ports work in this specific microcontroller. This represents a general I.O. pin on the microcontroller. So all of the microcontroller I.O. pins have a similar circuitry at the back end. And now let's see how this circuit works. First of all, we have to decide if this pin is going to be an output pin or an input pin. Uh, so let's make it an output pin by writing zero f uh, in this trace bit so this trace bit is going to be zero so here will be zero and this tri-state uh, logic has a bubble in on the selector so it's going to be one it means that this tri-state will act as a switch that is actually closed this switch is closed and this I open is now connected to the output driver the output driver is actually uh, this a data latch which is uh, the port or LAT uh, whatever you want both registers are connected to the uh, IO pin and now if you write one to the latch register it will appear on the IO pin and the IO pin will be driven high and if you write zero on the data latch it will appear also on the pin and it will it's going to be driven low so now the IO pin reflects the data written in the data latch it's now working in the output mode whatever we write on the latch register will uh, will appear on the digital I open uh, now if you if we want this pin to be an input pin like uh, this pin which is connected to the push button we will have to write one to the trace bit to the corresponding trace bit for this specific I open so it's now going to be one and this one will get, get inverted at the bubble and this means that the uh, this pin is not connected to this one there is no connection here so now whatever you write on the data latch will not appear at the I open you have no more control over the state of the I open actually it's going to be driven uh, outside of the microcontroller like this one it's driven outside now it's bolt up and if I press on this uh, push button it will get shorted to ground it's going to be zero and in order to read the state of this I open, we have actually to disable the analog feature. So this bin works in the digital uh, input mode. So now the state of the I open will be reflected on the data register. And you can read the port state for this I open. So let's do this example. Uh, this pin, I want it to be a, an output pin to drive this LED. 
So I'm going to the corresponding trace bit that corresponds to this uh, pin is going to be bit number two. Here in this trace register, I'm going to write zero. So this pin becomes output pin. And in order to control the state of this LED, I will be writing to the corresponding bit of the latch register or the port register. Uh, if I write one, the LED will turn on. If I write zero, the LED will turn off. On the other side, this IO pin is going to be an input pin. So I will write to the corresponding um, trace bit i write one to this bit so this pin will be an input pin now if you want to read the state of this pin you have to read the state or the value of this bit of the port register or latch anyone i will show you the difference between those two uh, you will have to read the state of this bit uh, of course this bit will reflect the state of this physical i open now this pin is pulled up so you will find one in this bit if you are going to read the bit 0 of this register, you will find it 1. And in case uh, someone pressed on this push button, this pin will be shorted to ground. So the state of this bit is going to be 0. And if you read the port uh, bit 0 value, it will be 0. This is why we actually put a 10k ohm resistor, which we call pull up resistor. Uh, because if you uh, press on the push button, uh, it will get shorted to the ground. So you have always to have a high resistance value in this path. Uh, you can also do it in the other way. You can pull the pin down. This can be a ground and this can be the VDD. So the pin is always zero. If I press on the push button, it will be one. Now let's see the, the difference between the latch and board registers. It's actually a feature that has been added by microchip uh, in these microcontrollers. Reading the port register reads the current state of the digital I.O. pin, and you can actually use, use the same register to write to the pin. Uh, however, using the latch register uh, will provide you the read, modify, write operation, which is an atomic operation that can't be interrupted, hence it's going to be more reliable. After deciding to use the D0 pin, we have to set this pin in the output mode. So I'm going to write trace D. This is the name of the register. And if I write zero, it's the name of the bit. So I can set this bit value to be zero. Now the D0 pin is in output mode. Uh, now we can start our infinite while loop. This is the super loop of the system. And we can actually start drive the pin high and low. In order to write to the specific pin, which is uh, D0, we can write the bit name, which is let D0, and we will drive it high, and we will drive it low. And of course, we have to uh, insert some sort of delay uh, between the two operations. Uh, the delay function, or macro, in uh, XC8 compiler is written in this way, double underscore delay underscore MS, and uh, let's delay for half a second and drive the bin low another half a second. I almost forgot to mention that these X's in the register names represents a, a or B or C or D and so on. So if you are using uh, pins from port A, it's going to be trace A and latch A. And if it's D, it's going to be uh, let D, trace D and so on. Uh, this pin is going to be D0, D1, D2 and up to D7. This is regarding the pin naming and the registers naming. Uh, now we are almost complete with our code. However, we have to define a specific identifier for the delay functions in order to work, uh, which is the frequency of the oscillator or the CPU clock that we are going to use in this project. Uh, of course, it's going to be 64 megahertz and you have to define it in this way, hash define underscore XTAL underscore frequency and space 64 million. If you don't include this line in your code, these two delay lines will generate an error. Uh, now we can build our code using this build button. Just click on it and our project is now building. The build process is now successful and we can flash the code to the microcontroller, which is the next step. However, I, I would like to stop at uh, this point and show you uh, different ways in order to write to specific bits of a register. For example, in, in this line, we are writing one to the first pin of the latch register for the port D. The name of the register is called 
let d just like this and if we want to write to specific bit of this register there are a few ways number one is by bit masking bit masking is actually to create a bit mask to protect all of the bits that you don't want to change and change only the bits that you are interested in it's going to be like this it's one left shifted by n where n is the number of the bit you want to change i'm going to replace this by zero so it's a one left shifted by zero so it's basically a one and zeros uh, what this line will do is actually going to or the let d register with one and zeros it's going to be like this uh, whatever the state of the let d register we are interested in the very first uh, bit we are going to or this register with uh, this value one left shifted by zero so it's going to be in its place and all of the bits are going to be zeros Oring with the, uh, zeros will not change the value of these bits in the original register however oring with one will enforce a one to this bit so we have now created a bit mask which we call a bit mask uh, which protects the state of other bits and change only the bit we are interested in this for uh, driving a, a bin high we can now uh, set a specific bit for clearing a specific bit of a register we will do another operation it's going to be logical end and the bit mask will be the same however it's going to be inverted just like this and we will place the bitwise inversion uh, symbol now the bit mask is inverted and we are doing ending this line will also clear the corresponding bit uh, we can check this in our example here is the bit we are interested in and here is our bit mask bit mask is going to be one left shifted by zero and it's inverted so the first place is going to be zero and all of the bits are going to be ones now here is our bit mask and the logical operation is going to be and operation now of course ending with one will not change the state of the other bits so they are protected now while ending this bit with zero will enforce a zero in the source register so we have now cleared the first bit of this register so this is the method number one method number two is actually to use what is called bit fields there are some defined bit fields in the processor files which we have included in the config inside this xc.h there are some processor defined uh, files they define the bit fields for every single uh, register in this microcontroller so you can actually write the name of the register which is let d this is the name of the register followed by bits in smaller case and hit dot to access the specific bit fields the bit field we are interested in is called let d0 and you can actually write one to this bit field so now we can access the individual uh, bit fields and write zero and or one which is an easy way to access specific bits of a specific register uh, however it's not uh, that portable uh, but you can use it of course for this register is going to be trace d the name of the register followed by bits dot trace d0 which is the name of the bit field uh, the last method which is method number three is going to be by writing the bit field name only you will remove this section and use only the name of the bit field itself they are defined in the corresponding file of your processor and you can still use it like i'm doing right now uh, i will open the data sheet go for uh, another uh, register maybe from the timer one module here is the timer control register uh, it can be anywhere from one three and five i'm going to use a uh, timer one control so this is the name of the register t1 c o n this is the name of the register you can add bits and access the specific bit fields or you can actually write in the name of the bit that you want to access uh, maybe timer uh, on this specific bit actually controls the operation of the timer module it can be turned on or off by writing to this uh, bit writing one will enable the timer writing zero will stop the timer uh, this small x can be replaced by one three five for controlling timer one three and five uh, I will copy the bit name like this and I'm going to uh, paste it here I will replace the x by the number of the timer it's going to be timer 1 and I will turn on timer 1 like this I'm writing to the bit name 
I will build the code to show you that it's not going to generate an error. And as you can see, it will not generate an error. It will build successfully. So using uh, the bit fields can be a very easy way to access specific bits. However, it's not a very recommended way. It's not very portable and it is not included in many of the software standards. Uh, while being one of the features of the C programming language. Anyway, we have now completed our very first project. It is the LED blinking. Let's move to the next step, which is to flash the code to the microcontroller and see how it works. For flashing our code, we will open MPLAB IPE, the integrated programming environment. And here is how it looks like. I will maximize the window. Uh, I have not yet connected my PIC3 to the PC, so I will uh, connect the USB to my laptop. And it has now detected my PIC3 device right here. And here you choose the microcontroller. You will type in the specific microcontroller's port number right here and you don't have to choose the family name i believe that if it's your first time to open the mplab ipe you will not see the window like this so i will log out and i will show you how to log in the advanced mode so you will open the settings window and choose advanced mode and it will ask you to type in microchip and the password in order to log in so i'm going to write microchip click on log in and we have now been logged in the advanced mode uh, we will select the tool the microcontrollers part number and we will go to the power section i'm i have chosen to power the target from the picket 3 so i'm going to power my breadboard using the picket 3 and the voltage level is going to be 5 volts sometimes when you connect some sensors and lcd to the microcontrollers uh, breadboard it's going to drive the vdd line and it may go below 5 volts so uh, the pick 3 will detect the voltage line on the vdd pin and it will report an error so in this case you can uh, choose another voltage level like maybe 4.75 and it will also work just as fine i wanted to make this clear as it's going to happen to some of you so now we will return to the operate window i will click on connect it will show me a warning message here is the warning message. It warns me if this uh, big device uh, is not to, uh, 5 volts tolerant, so it will get damaged. If it's a 3.3 volt device, it will be damaged. So I know that it's a 5 volts, so I will click OK. So it has been now connected, and the VDD voltage line is measured to be 5 volts. Uh, if it gives you an error, you can just uh, go to the power section and choose maybe 4.7 volts. It may work OK. Now I will click on this button in order to navigate to the place where we have our hex file or the binary file for this project. Here is our project named pic 18 f led blinking. Uh, I will navigate to the destination file, default production, and here is the hex file which we also call binary file. I will click on open and the file is now loaded to the software. I will click on this program button in order to flash the code to the microcontroller. The prototyping board will actually now be blinking while this process is uh, working, so don't worry about that. The flashing process is now complete, and let's see the results in my lab. Here is our LED blinking example. Uh, now I will connect my probe of the oscilloscope to see the signal and measure the timing. Here is the ground, and here is the probe signal. And let's have a look on the screen. I will change the time scale. Let's make it maybe 500 milliseconds. I have stopped the signal. Let's now open the cursors and place a cursor maybe here. And the other one right here. And as you can see, the timing of the blinking is 500 milliseconds. So it's actually turning on for 500 milliseconds and turning off for the exact same time interval. Uh, let's do another example in this one we are going to attach uh, a push button uh, to control the lid uh, we will see the gpio pins i'm going to use this pin rd2 for the input from the push button so first of all we will have to write a one to the corresponding bit for this pin in the trace register so we will go back to the code and write in the trace d2 bit and we will write one in this bit now this pin is going to be an input pin and of course we should also disable the analog input on this pin in order to be a digital I/O pin. Uh, let me explain uh, this uh, using this diagram right here. 
uh, first of all we will write a one to this trash control bit so it's going to be one in order to operate in the input mode so this try state will operate as a open switch so this pin is not now connected to the output driver whatever you write on the output it will not appear on the input so it's now an input pin however and in order to read the state of this uh, digital I/O pin, you should also activate this gate in order to activate this gate you will have to write a zero to this analog select bit if you write a zero this bubble will make it one of course ending with one will always uh, generate the current state of the I/O pin. if it's a one the output will be one if it's a zero the output will be a, a zero now the digital state of the I/O pin, whether it's a zero or one can be found by reading the corresponding bit in the port register so we should also write a zero to the analog select bit in order to make this pin an input pin so let's go get back to the data sheet and in the io ports chapter 10 i will search for the analog select there is analog select a b c d for the corresponding ports uh, i will get to this one by writing a zero the uh, digital input buffer is going to be enabled by writing a one it's going to be disabled as we have seen in the diagram so i will copy the bit name of this bit that corresponds to the pin we are using and I will paste it here and I will write a zero to this bit in order to uh, activate the digital input feature and now we need to read the current state of the push button bin uh, of course this pin is going to be pulled down so it's going to be always a zero until a user press on the push button it will be connected like this there is going to be a pull down resistor to the ground maybe a 10k ohm uh, and here is the push button and it's going to be connected to VDD the digital state of the IO pin will always be zero until you press on the button when you press the button the input pin will be shorted to the VDD and it will become one uh, let's now read the state of the uh, pin by using the port register uh, so I will make an if statement and here is the port D register name after writing the register name you can add the word bits and place the dot operator to access the specific bit field that you want to write to it's going to be uh, rd2 and here i am reading the current state of the rd2 bit in the port d register uh, if the state is one i will turn on the led so i will place this line here and the else so as you can see if the push button is pressed the led will turn on and if it's not pressed the led will turn off and that's all what we want to do in this example so i will build the code built successfully so let's now flash the code to the microcontroller um, we will go to the file location which is the same hex file but it's now updated so we have now updated or loaded the new hex file i will click on program and it will be loaded to the microcontroller it's done and let's see the results And let's now create another project to show you how to send uh, strings of text from the microcontroller to the PC over the UART module. So I will create another project using the same microcontroller. And let's call it string print maybe and save it on the desktop. We will also follow the same steps to create a main.c file and another uh, configurations header file and we can just use the same configurations from the uh, previous project so I will select all and copy and select all and paste and we have now done the configurations let me close the old project you can close uh, the old project by right clicking on the project name like this one uh, and choose close now it has been closed sometimes you may uh, build your code and you will discover uh, later that you were building a, a previous project not not the current one and this may cost you some time to figure out um, let's now start developing our project first of all we need to configure the uart hardware module so uh, we will have to open the data sheet and go to the uart and here is chapter 16 the eusart uh, this is the hardware module for the uart Generally, you need to read the instructions in the datasheet and uh, check the diagrams and uh, check the instructions in order to uh, configure the module and you have also to check the registers how to set up and configure the hardware and also do the transmission and reception using the instructions of the datasheet however, I could not fit uh, this topic in, inside of this tutorial so it's going to take uh, more time 
so I encourage you to open uh, Google and search for your art tutorial and you will find the tutorial from my website uh, here this one it's going to be a full guide for the UART communication it does start right from the beginning uh, just by introducing to the concept of shift registers and how serial communication works in the first place and then build up all the knowledge base that you need to develop in order to be able to configure and write your own drivers for the UART how to do the calculations for the boot rate and so on uh, it's a very long uh, article I think it's uh, more than 8k words uh, so it's going to take you some time to uh, walk through uh, and I hope it's going to be helpful uh, and here is what we are going to do we are going to send some text data from the microcontroller over the UART using a USB to TTL converter and plug in this USB inside the PC and read the data from the microcontroller this is the practical lab that we are going to do right now and you have to trust me that this code that I'm going to paste right here is going to configure the UART we will only have to call this function and it's going to configure the UART and in order to know how this code actually works you have to read the article on my website and I will make sure to create another tutorial for UART alone in a future video now by calling this function we have initialized and uh, configured the hardware peripheral of the UART to operate in the transmission mode and the boot rate is going to be uh, 19800 uh, here is the current configuration that I am using for the UART it's this one so this is the equation that we are going to use in order to find out the value for the uh, boot rate generation register you can actually change the boot rate as you want here is the boot rate that I'm using right here and let me uh, write down this equation the FOCC is the main frequency of the CPU which is 64 megahertz and the denominator is 16 by the value of the boot rate uh, generation register which we don't know so we will substitute by x for this value and plus 1 and we will solve this equation for x in order to find this value shift solve equal and the value for the boot rate generation register is going to be 201 and this value is found right here in this line uh, and by reading the article you will know what the other configurations uh, actually do let's now uh, send some text from the UART using this function which is UART write string uh, I will place it here um, let's write a string and uh, we will insert some sort of delay maybe 100 milliseconds uh, between each uh, string we send and let's send hello world gg easy project maybe uh, and don't forget to add the line termination backslash or backslash n in order to terminate the line and if we compile this code it will generate an error because we are using the delay function without declaring the frequency of the oscillator so we will have to define underscore xdl frequency to be 64 megahertz uh, now it's fine let's build this code it does build successfully uh, I will have to uh, go back to the data sheet and uh, check the pins uh, I didn't show this to you so let's get back to uh, these tables uh, we are searching for the UART pins we are in the pin summary so the UART pins are those two uh, RB6 and 7 no excuse me those pins for the UART2 we are using UART1 which is uh, this uh, one so the pins are going to be uh, C6 and C7 the RX and the TX pin so those are going to be the pins we will be using uh, to connect the external USB to TTL converter uh, as you have seen right here so let's now flash this code to the microcontroller and see how it will work uh, let's check the power uh, section and I will uh, enable to power the target from the uh, ICSP port uh, and it's okay so let's connect I will navigate to the place of this project this default production and here is the hex file I will click open and after loading I will click program and now you can plug in the USB TTL converter module into your PC and open any terminal and choose the right um, boot rate and start reading the data coming from the microcontroller into your PC and you can also use the Arduino serial monitor uh, as a terminal and see the data here is the USB to TTL converter module 
uh, this pin is the ground pin which is the blue so it's connected to ground the yellow line is the 5 volts line so it goes to VDD and the green line is the RX of this module so it will be connected to the TX of the microcontroller which is the C6 pin uh, let's power up the microcontroller and here as you can see it is sending the data to the USB to TTL converter and let's now hook the probe of the oscilloscope to the TX line to see the data uh, coming from the microcontroller now I have connected the probe of the oscilloscope to the TX line let's see the data packets here as you can see the data packets coming from the microcontroller uh, I will take a shot from this signal and I will zoom in in the time and I will enable the decode feature so it can now decode the UART data here is the decoder number I have uh, two decoders in this oscilloscope and the protocol is UART the signal RX on channel 1 TX is disabled and this is the threshold voltage um, here is the configurations of the UART it's 8 bit uh, data length uh, there is one stop bit there is no parity check and here is the baud rate I have edited the code uh, to match the baud rate it was uh, written in a wrong way uh, not the standard value uh, of course we have here a standard value and you can also choose a, a custom value I could have chosen uh, 19 uh, 800 and it could work okay I have just in to enter the custom value in this window and it will work okay however it is not a standard value so let's stick with this one let's move it a little bit and maybe zoom once again let's go to the start of the message as you can see hello I don't know if you can see this uh, very well or not as you can see our message here hello space world gg easy project so it's sending the data okay we can check it with the decoder of the oscilloscope let's now connect the usb ttl converter to the pc and see how it works with the pc And let's now add a final project to this uh, tutorial and it's going to be sending numeric variable from a microcontroller to the PC. For this I'm going to use uh, an array of character, it's going to be a buffer, maybe uh, 20 characters and some sort of variable, it may be uh, an 8-bit variable, uh, let's call it temperature maybe, or uh, only temp, uh, the starting var value may be 0. Uh, and we will send the temp variable to the PC of course this value will be changing uh, as we will uh, do in the main loop uh, we will hash include the std io library and the standard int this one for the sprint function and this one for the uint8 type um, let's now get back to the main super loop uh, we will remove this line um, and we will make the variable temp change with time uh, I will make it uh, maybe uh, uh, increment by one uh, and we will uh, convert the numeric value of temp to a string value and for this we will use the sprintf function what this function will do is it will, it's going to take the numeric value temp and convert it to a string and it's going to replace the percent %d by the string of the temp variable after con being converted to a string and this whole string will be uh, put in, inside of the buffer now we want to send the buffer over the UART so we will use this function to send the buffer I'm going to make this delay smaller and I'm going to hard limit the value of temp to be maybe 100 so if, it, uh, if temp is larger than 100 it's going to go back to 0 so we are now done with this project let's build the code and it does successfully there is no error uh, and of course if we uh, look in the terminal it's going to be sending these values 0 1 2 3 and up to 100 and if we plot the the incoming data using the serial plotter uh, inside arduino or any other software it's going to be something like this uh, that's what we are expecting uh, so let's now test this practically and see what we will get
so let's wrap up this tutorial at this point I have glossed over some topics I know that and I know how to bridge all the gaps as we move on uh, in this channel I am going to publish some more tutorials some more episodes of ESM which is my technical program that is about to start here on this channel uh, and I couldn't fit some important topics such as um, uh, timers interrupts and so on uh, inside of this tutorial because of the time limit and I know this uh, video is going to be too long and you have to excuse me for this however you still can visit my website in the meantime uh, in order to check for some more information some more tutorials I have published two complete courses um, here is my website and here is the embedded systems category and here are the tutorials this course for ARM based microcontrollers STM32 and this one for big microcontrollers this is the table of contents for the big microcontrollers you can actually uh, start doing these practical labs to learn more about embedded systems and microcontrollers programming you will learn a lot about peripherals and how to control different types of, of motors how to generate PWM signal how to send data over UART, SPI, I2C how to interface different modules internal EEPROM and external EEPROM and servo motors and so on inside of each of these tutorials you will have more than one lab e example with a complete code listing and the connections diagram and so on here is the STM32 uh, course I think if you type in uh, ARM programming or ARM uh, course or STM32 tutorials you will find my website on the first page it has been out there for maybe more than uh, three years and I think you can find more information uh, right there at the end I hope you find this tutorial helpful if you did then don't forget to turn on the bell icon in order to get notifications for the new videos that are coming up soon have a nice day and I will see you next time